So let's do an example where we can evolve to exponential functions. These are going to be decaying exponentials. I'll use an A here, and uh, let's use a B here to have two things. Um, I'll forget uh, what happens if A equals B that we might come back to, because I'll have that sort of its own little special case if I remember right. But I think in this case that we're looking at, they have two different. Uh, a doesn't equal B. They're different. So this will work for our current purposes. Anyway, so what you have here is you have two functions. One might be decaying fast. One might be decaying slow. And the bigger A is, so this might be the case of, this might be X of T, this might be H of T. And this would be, for an example, where A is bigger than B. So this means that A is decaying faster uh, I mean, the x function here is decaying faster than the h function. All right, so those are decaying functions. Let's pick one of them to be fixed and one of them to flip and shift. So if you remember the result of our convolution, how about I'll pick x to be fixed? So I'll write this as x tau h of t minus tau d tau. So we'll flip and shift. No, we'll keep stationary the x function we'll flip and shift the h function. And let's draw a tau axis. Do, 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 I'm going to draw an axis here. Do, 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 I draw an axis all year. We'll have x as our stationary function, our x of tau. So let me draw that in. Do, 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 do. So here's x of tau. It starts at zero. And now I've got the h of tau. And remember, in the problem that we were looking at on the homework, one of these is shifted. You could do this with that shift. Or you could do it like this and then shift it later. I'm happy either way. It, it's actually a good exercise to try it both ways and sort of get a feel for the differences. Let me draw what this looks like. So this is the one that's decaying not as fast. Let me try to indicate that. This does not need to be a work of art. So the right edge here this is, I'm drawing h of t minus tau here for the particular case of t equals zero. Oh, by the way, if you find all this convolution stuff to be painful, don't worry, it is. Uh, but the whole, entire rest of the course is easier. <laughs> A good portion of what we'll look at with Fourier and Laplace transforms is to try to avoid doing this when we can. All right, so this is a thing that's shifting to the right. And Unlike the big five region convolution that we looked at previously, where these are functions that chopped off at a certain point, here I really only have two regions to worry about. So I've got a t less than zero case. And in this case, this function here is my fixed function. In this case, when this guy shift to the left, there's no overlap. You know that ahead of time that uh, yt for this particular case is going to be equal to zero. All right, so it's the only other case we need to worry about. So it's, there's only two regions in this problem. It's where it's bigger than zero. It's where these things intersect. Do, 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 do. I've got my original function here. I've got this. Uh, the right edge of this block is going to be at t. This is what's shifting around, right? Because it's just where we've got this exponential here. And remember, it, it feels weird, but remember... We're plotting this on a tau axis, which is why you get the flipping and the shifting. And it, if t is bigger than zero, then it shifted to the right, and then we get overlap. And that overlap is very exciting. So we've got an overlap in this region. And remember, we're now doing a pointwise multiply. One thing that's very important to remember, especially for, I think, the last problem on the, on the homework, is that when you multiply, you have to keep track of the signs, right? Plus times plus here gives us plus, but a plus times a minus or a minus times a plus will give you a minus, and minus times a minus gives you plus. And when you integrate, you're integrating a signed area. So I don't know what this looks like exactly. You know, it looks like whatever it is. Maybe something like this. Maybe it's something like that. Whatever it is. Remember, I'm just needing the limits here. We've got a function, whatever the result of this multiplication is that goes from zero to t. All right, so let's plug in here the actual, the actual functions that we need to worry about. So x of tau is will be e to the minus a, but now we're going to plug in tau. So it's so y of t is going to equal my integral. I'm not going to fill in the 
So we'll write this as e to the minus a tau. And what's h? h has a decaying exponential, but it has a b in it. That's this guy, right? So this is, this is what I'm making the yellow. All right, so down here I've got e to the minus b t minus tau d tau. Okay, so what are the limits? The limits are going to go from 0 down here to t up here. So now, when we do the rest of this integral in this region, let me actually pull out a, in front. I can pull out the e to the minus bt because that doesn't have a tau in it. And then I have integrating from 0 to t. Now I'm combining these things, so I'll have e. I'll write this as a minus. So this is a minus b like this. Then I've got d tau. Okay, so I've got calculus, calculus. Okay, so I've got e to the minus bt. There's a tau up here. Uh, e to the minus bt. All right, so doing the calculus here, I've got like a 1 over, I can write this as a minus b. Let me go ahead and put the minus here, because otherwise I'll probably screw this up. I've got e to the minus a minus b. So I plug in t for tau that gives me that, and then I've got minus the lower limit, which is going to be 1. And the way this usually plays out, let me pull this minus inside, so I'll write this as e to the minus bt. Um, I've got over a minus b, and then let me take this minus inside, so I'll write 1 minus e to the minus a minus bt, like that. So here's the thing, at this point, it's not always obvious what the simplest way to write it is. Let me go ahead and pull in e to the minus bt here, and then I'll have minus, because I have an e to the minus at, and if I pull this minus through, that gives me a plus. Then when I pull this in and multiply, I think it cancels. So this is the case for t bigger than zero that we started with, right? So this is for the t bigger than zero case. And it's 0 less than 0, so I could just simplify all of this and write y of t equals, you know, e to the minus bt minus e to the minus at over a minus b whole thing times ut. Because here I have a two regions, and conveniently it's 0 for, you know, one of them for t less than 0. And there's my answer. So if you look at this particular example, you might ask yourself, what about the case where a equals b? We run into a bit of a quandary because if a is equal to b, I have a 1 here, I have a 1 here, they subtract to give me 0. I have a 1 here and I have a 1 here, and they subtract and give me 0. I'm going to not worry about the u for a second. Let's call this stuff. And so now I'm going to write the limit as a approaches b of our stuff down there. Let's use some L'Hopital's rule action. And in this class, every time I tell you to lose, use L'Hopital's rule, it's a legitimate thing to do. If you go back to your calculus professor, they can come up with all sorts of counterexamples where some condition for L'Hopital's rule to be true is not satisfied, and the result is you can try to apply L'Hopital's rule, like you can mechanically apply the formulas, but you get and you can get a number, but that number is garbage. In this class, every time I apply L'Hopital's rule, it will be okay. So let's see, if A approaches B, what we'll do is we'll take a derivative with respect to A. We'll take a derivative with respect to A applying L'Hopital's rule. So when I take the derivative down here with respect to A, that's going to give me a 1 out. We're taking the derivative of the denominator, and then we're taking the derivative of the numerator, which is all this stuff. All right, so I'm going to take, you know, take all these limits... It's a going to be, a going to be. All right. So what's the derivative here? With respect to a, derivative of a minus b with respect to a is going to give me 1. Okay, well, that's not terribly interesting. What about what's in the numerator here? Okay, so that's going to give me, if I take a derivative here, now I have to be careful because every place else in the class where we use L'Hopital's rule, on something like this, it's going to be on t, or when you look at Fourier transforms, it's going to be on omega. This is a weird special case where the thing I'm taking the derivative of is not with respect to t, it's with respect to a. So when I take this derivative, t is the constant relative to the variable a, so minus t comes down, the minus is canceled, that's going to give me a t, 
and then it'll give me e to the minus at here after I take the derivative here. For the special case in this example of a equals b, the answer is going to be y of t is equal to t e minus a t ut. So that's just for this special case, because otherwise this guy is weird. <laughs>